we have greeting hello from tokyo we are so um, so so glad to welcome you and it's uh, almost seven o'clock in tokyo and i guess it's uh, six o'clock in taiwan so what did you eat for dinner or lunch today uh, yeah, I didn't uh, have dinner yet. I will have dinner after this conversation. Uh, for lunch, I had some uh, sesame noodles. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so far, what were you doing today? Uh, today, I met uh, with visitors uh, from different places. I did meet a visitor uh, from Japan, uh, and we learned together how to fold uh, origami uh, together, the, the cream uh, together. Uh, the visitor's name uh, is, um, I, I think, uh, I, I, I don't know, Taro, Takoro Asao, Takoro Asao-san, uh, the designer of the Olympic, um, Tokyo Olympic uh, logo. Uh, and. And, and a, a very famous uh, artist and architect. So um, I really learned a lot uh, from the one hour conversation uh, with uh, Ta Takoro Asao-san. Yeah. Oh, very thanks. It's good to hear from you. So, um, so Next, we move on to the Q&A session one, which is some question from the survey. So we have a question for you only. The first question is, is, is this, uh, for years I was interested in you and I sent you an email and surprisingly you reply me only for two days. So I want to ask you this question. Why did you accept this invitation? Yeah, so um, I'm Taiwan's digital minister. Although many people in Japan call me the IT Daijin or the IT minister, uh, to me, it's not what digital is. IT connects machines, but digital connects people to people. So uh, in Mandarin in Taiwan, Shu Wei means digital, but also plural. Uh, and plural is many people, uh, diverse people, and connecting them together. So uh, one of the connections that I make uh, as part of my work in the cabinet is youth engagement. So I am in charge of connecting to people who are as young as under 18. Because if in Taiwan you're above 18 or 20, you can vote. And there are politicians connecting to you because they want your vote. But if you're under 18, uh, you're not yet part of democracy. <laughs> so uh, my work as the digital minister, especially, is to connect to people younger than 18 um, and uh, younger than 20, because that's another adult age in Taiwan <clears throat> for voting for presidents uh, and mayors. Uh, so people younger than 20 is my main constituent. Uh, and it doesn't matter whether you're from Japan or from Taiwan or anywhere, as long as you are a young person, uh, it is, I think, part of my work to connect with you. Thank you. Thank you. I was so moved by your words. And the next question is about school life. So I would like to ask you a question. Oh, sorry, uh, I will read the question. It is said that Japan has little diversity and lacks understanding of minorities, and it takes courage to be different from others at school. And we feel there is strong peer pressure in Japan. So uh, even for you, does it take courage to do something different from others? To me, it doesn't take courage. Uh, it's about taking all the sides, like listening to people who feel differently from you. Uh, in the society in Japan or Taiwan, there are a lot of uh, business as usual, all right? Social norms. Uh, it's just the way people do things, right? For example, marriage. 
uh, joining two families together uh, and um, having children together uh, and so on, that is considered a cornerstone of stable uh, relationship. But once you understand what people care about, the stable relationship, the stability of a child's uh, environment, uh, then you can say, but I push for uh, marriage equality to reinforce your values with marriage equality more people will be able to form stable family <laughs> they will be able to adopt or have children together uh, and uh, civilization now uh, will reach uh, more people because uh, there are just different uh, people who want to form different sort of families but we are all uh, part of this side of family values so once you understand what people really care about you don't have to do things exactly the same way as they do but you can say, oh, I do things my way because I want to support the values you also care about. Thank you. Our next question, please tell us about your school life, your experience dropping out of school and your thoughts about school education. So uh, between I was four and I was 14. Between those 10 years, I attended three kindergartens, six primary schools, and one year of middle school, and I dropped out. So for those 10 years, every year is at a different kindergarten or school. Uh, so I've never done uh, summer homework. <laughs> uh, every summer I switch <laughs> school. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. Uh, of course, every time it's a different reason. Uh, the first one uh, from um, the first year of primary to second was because uh, I was considered gifted. But from second to third was because I faced bullying uh, in my class. From the third to fourth is because my dad went to Germany. So I went to Germany with him. Uh, going back to uh, the Taiwan, I had to do a heart surgery uh, and so on. So all different reasons. Uh, but uh, my uh, dropping out of the school is with the full uh, endorsement, blessing of the head of my school because I convinced the head of my middle school that I can learn uh, just as much, even better uh, on the internet compared to at her school. So she said, okay, I, I bless you. <laughs> I would not uh, say that uh, you're violating the law and so on. So uh, I'm really grateful. Uh, and it is another uh, example of identifying, listening to uh, their values, to the other side's values, but then say, I do things differently because I also want to support your values. So I attended many undergrad level classes, graduate level classes in nearby universities. So I didn't really quit education. I didn't quit school either. I just quit the idea of having to get a diploma uh, from a certain school. I hope that answered your question. Thank you so much. And the next is about digital skills. So I would like to read a question. And uh, oh, <laughs> this question and it's very interesting programming. So how can we master programming by ourselves? Any tips? Yeah, when I was uh, programming, when I was eight years old, I did it on paper. I didn't have a personal computer. So I just read about programming and I used a uh, pen and paper to draw a keyboard. <laughs> And then I use pencil uh, to draw what the computers will print. So it doesn't really matter what kind of computer you have. Even without computer, you can learn programming. Now, uh, of course, I uh, had a personal computer very uh, shortly after that. Uh, and the first uh, games uh, that I wrote uh, was educational games, learning about fractions, learning about uh, elementary school uh, level mathematics in a way that's uh, fun, right, interactive. So nowadays, uh, if you look uh, at the community called Scratch, uh, S-C-R-A-T-C-H, uh, it's sponsored by Lego, uh, built by the MIT Media Lab. Uh, and it's very much like the games that I made when I was a year old. They're very interactive, they're fun games. And the best thing of Scratch 
is that it's open, so you don't have to start、uh, from the beginning.、Uh, you can start with a game you like to play, and then you change its code so that the hero look like you, <laughs>、uh, or change the color, or change the background music.、Uh, so you can begin by looking at fun scratch games and changing those、uh, scratch games. Once you understand how to program, then you can look at your daily life. And see which part of that、uh, can be automated, meaning that you do the same thing every day. So maybe a robot will do better than you.、Uh, so you can try to write a program to automate that part of life, so you get more time,、uh, and then you can learn more about programming. Hope that answers your question. Thank you. Scratch and label. Scratch and label. Next question: How do you come up with new ideas for applications? Yeah, I'm part of this community called G Zero V or Gov Zero,、uh, and Gov Zero is a online community and it's open, as I mentioned.、Uh, everything that is written by the Gov Zero, all the programs and so on, are free for everybody to see, to change, and to adapt to one's own needs. So, for example,、uh, up until now,、uh, on the Gov Zero's online chat room,、uh, there's a COVID-19 channel that has more than a thousand and four hundred people on that channel. So, any time people think about something related to COVID,、uh, maybe how to prevent the next COVID-like. Uh, thing. If they have a good idea, then people will、uh, work together on that idea. And that channel is where we had the mask rationing map, the SMS-based contact tracing,、uh, the distribution of rapid testing,、uh, the donation of mask to the entire world.、Uh, all these are ideas that came from the Gov Zero channel. So it was not my idea. I'm just one participant in the channel, and I amplify those ideas. But I bring those ideas. To our cabinet and say this is a better idea than our ministers.、Uh, let's just use their idea. So I'm more like a bridge、uh, from the 1,400 people on the COVID channel in Gov Zero、uh, to the cabinet. I'm a bridge between the two.、Mm, so you get、uh, like、um, many kinds of ideas from the community. Yes. So if you join online、yeah. open communities, you will too. Have a lot of good ideas because it's not your idea; it's our idea. It's everyone's idea. Thank you. I think it's a very great idea. Thank you. And next, it's about sexuality and gender.、Mm -hmm. And the question is, uh, oh, the following question was. Received anonymously in the survey.、Mm. Uh, so this is the wrong question, but I would like to read it.、Mm. Uh, I, for a long time, have had occasional moments in which I feel like a man, others in which I feel like a woman,、uh, others in which I feel like neither a man、mm. nor a woman.、Mm. And now I don't know what to do. I would be very happy to get some tips and advice.、Mm -hmm. So. Please well, answer this question. Well, I'm sure that、uh, all of us have moments in which、uh, we feel like speaking Japanese, and other、uh, moments where we feel like speaking English.、Uh, and now,、uh, <laughs> like sometimes we don't speak either. Maybe we speak JavaScript、uh, or something like that, right? So I mean, it's it's normal.、Uh, for, for me,、uh, when when I was thirteen, fourteen years old. Uh, I noticed that my puberty、uh, is not like the other boys、uh, in my class. I mean,、uh, my voice、uh, did change because I was part of the singing choir. That was、uh, very quickly noticed.、Uh, but I didn't really grow a, a noticeable Adam's apple,、uh, and I don't have、uh, as much、uh, development of facial hair and so on. So I, I wonder what happened.、Uh, and so later on, I, I would check. Uh, my uh, physiology and learned that I was born、uh, with a condition of very low testosterone. So、um, my development is not the same because I do not receive in my blood、uh, a sufficient amount of testosterone to fully、uh, go through a male puberty.、Uh, but fortunately, I was already part of、uh, online community.、Uh, I'm very happy to、uh, discover that there are many people who are like me.、Uh, actually, not many people in my school、uh, who are like this. 
because maybe it's one in a thousand. But even if it's one in a thousand, uh, the entire world has millions of people like me. <laughs> so we can discover each other uh, on the internet very quickly. So I think this is a great opportunity for me to share uh, that uh, I just do whatever I, I like to do. Uh, the computer never asked about my gender <laughs> when I learned uh, programming. <laughs> so so um, it doesn't really matter uh, if I behave uh, or feel like a man or a woman. Sometimes I feel like a robot and the computer is fine uh, with that too. Uh, it's not uh, biology, right? Biology doesn't determine your uh, destiny. And this is important. And uh, uh, of course, uh, the fashion, right? Sometimes say um, like um, a, uh, a very high uh, shoe uh, may be uh, for, for women, but uh, previously in Europe, uh, these are for uh, men. Uh, or like the, um, for example, the color pink. Uh, nowadays, people think it's uh, feminine, uh, but for a while, uh, like a couple of centuries ago, it was considered masculine. Uh, so it's all uh, just fashion. So I think one of the main point I want to make is that if the current fashion isn't your fashion, uh, your identity, uh, then it's not your fault and it's not the society's fault. Uh, it's about celebrating the diversity, the plurality of different ways of looking at things. During the pandemic, uh, maybe some of you already know, um, in 2020 February, there was a young boy about your, your age calling the toll-free number 1922 uh, in Taiwan, saying, uh, you're rationing out mask, but all I got was pink once. All the boys in my class were blue. Uh, can, you, can you give me some blue mask? I don't want to wear pink mask uh, to school. Uh, but the very next day on the 2 p.m. press conference, all the ministers, all the medical officers wore pink masks. Uh, and for a few weeks, uh, all the fashion brands uh, turned pink uh, on the social media. So pink became the most uh, hip color and the boy become the most fashionable boy because only he has the color that the heroes wear uh, and minister chen of health and welfare even said that pink panther pink panther was his hero when he was a child uh, so he also has the color of heroes hero i guess so basically uh, that really helped because uh, then it's not about giving the boy uh, a blue mask because that will uh, reinforce the stereotype it is about showing that oh, we can all wear pink and be happy about it. So I think that is one chance to communicate with the society. So do uh, more things like the young boy, but also do more things like the Pink Panther loving minister. Thank you for awesome answer. <laughs> The next question is this. The news in the century says that Japanese was, Japan was ranked 180 in the world for gender equality. What do you think about it? I guess the Taiwan is uh, like a uh, high ranked in the mm -hmm. gender equality, but what do you think? Uh, at the moment, yes. But when I was a child, not so much. Uh, when I was a child, uh, like for my father and my mother, uh, they are currently about 70 years old. Uh, and uh, when they were working age, like my age, uh, they were told that uh, even though my mom performed very well in her work, uh, she cannot receive a higher salary than her husband. Uh, and uh, that's called the glass ceiling, right? Uh, and uh, for people above 60, years old, 60 years old in Taiwan. It's very common. Uh, and the people would think uh, that uh, it's normal uh, for women to receive less. Uh, and it's harder for women to get promoted for people above 60 years old. Now, uh, when they were young, uh, it was not a good uh, situation in Taiwan either. Uh, and uh, I think Taiwan got to this place. It's because we made sure that all decision making uh, positions need to uh, have sufficient balance. So for example, our uh, MPs, legislators at large, any gender um, must not be below uh, one, one half uh, or one third for many uh, committees and judges and panels. Uh, and we don't change that for uh, any exceptions. So uh, we cannot have a committee, cannot have a panel unless uh, each gender occupy at least one third 
in that committee uh, in Taiwan. So uh, once we do that, more and more decision makers uh, become uh, balanced on the gender impact and gender issues. Uh, and so the Ministry of Labor, the Ministry of Finance, of Economy, and so on, because they all have then the panel of at least one third women and at least one third men, uh, that means that their decisions uh, will not prefer too strongly uh, one gender over the other. And so the end goal is that biology should not determine our destiny. So maybe uh, Japan can try something like that. Thanks. And next question is about politics. Mm -hmm. uh, as I said before, uh, uh, in Japan, hmm? oh, it's called is called. What is it called? Mm -hmm. uh, so, sorry, uh, I will continue. Uh, in yeah. Taiwan, young people are in charge of politics, and the distance between politics and the people is very close. How can we make politics more accessible in Japan and channel the energy of young people into politics? Yes, uh, I, I think it's a very important question, and it's a question I think all the time, how can we make the young people in other um, places in the world as active uh, as they are in Taiwan? I think one of the reasons is that uh, politics is not just about voting. Uh, I think uh, we are not trying to say that vote more. We're saying uh, express yourself more, unmute yourself, right? Uh, make yourself the, the host of new discussions. And it doesn't mean that uh, you run for mayor or legislator when you are uh, 17 years old, but it does mean that you need to offer a, a platform, a, a uh, wish, uh, and that can unite people together, can mobilize people. So in Taiwan, we have this platform called Join the GOV, the TW. On the Join platform, anyone, regardless of their age, can start a new petition. And if they collect more than 5,000 signatures, the ministry need to offer their response. So for example, um, I think a year and a half ago, uh, one uh, young person, maybe in middle school, uh, proposed on this platform that uh, every day uh, the high school students um, must enter the school on seven and a half, half past seven uh, a.m. Uh, but the, the class doesn't start uh, until uh, 10 past eight. So for those 40 minutes, they have nothing uh, to do. Well, there are something to do, but it's not uh, mandatory. It should not be mandatory. Uh, and uh, it makes the sleeping time uh, less for the young people uh, because all of them need to show up uh, half past seven. Uh, so uh, they say it's not fair. Uh, and they say we need to change so that the first class starts after nine. Uh, and I'm willing to stay later, <laughs> uh, but don't make us uh, wake up early. So that was the petition. And more than 5,000 people joined uh, in the petition. And all the ministries of education um, and the local bureaus of education actually met. And because that was uh, partly during COVID, uh, our meeting was also online. So many students who cannot travel to Taipei also participated just by typing uh, and speaking online. And we all agreed, including the parents and the educators, that if you don't sleep uh, sufficiently, even if you learn a lot in school, you will not uh, memorize it because memory uh, from short term to long term takes place in sleep. So sleep is very important as part of the education process. Uh, so we re really need to ensure that people sleep uh, good and sleep well. Uh, and so uh, starting, I think, this, this year, um, the school must not uh, say that the student can, uh, you know, exempt uh, from showing up early or showing up. Late. There's no exception. Uh, everybody by rule only show up after eight. Uh, but the school uh, exceptionally can say, I reserve one day a week where people have to show up half past seven because uh, there's important discussions to be made or, or whatever. But at most one day uh, per week. 
Uh, and so it's real change uh, and the uh, regulations, everything changed. So for the young people who participate in the uh, petition, they don't need to wait until they can vote a new mayor or vote a new president. They don't need to run for the city council. Just by showing up, uh, unmuting themselves and raising their hands, uh, they, they changed uh, their, their life, right? Uh, their sleep, at least. Uh, so I think this is very important to offer such a platform that uh, let people care about things very close to them. Uh, and eventually people will care about larger things like uh, the climate change and so on. But you must first uh, have this uh, gratification uh, from starting a new movement or a new petition about things that are really close uh, to your daily life. Thank you. And next. Next question is about diversity. Mm -hmm. do, you have, do you have any tips for Japan to become a society that embraces diversity? Yeah. Um, so outside of Japan, there are many uh, people like me uh, who grow up watching Japanese anime, uh, manga, uh, and so on. So uh, a lot of people who are very friendly to Japanese culture. Uh, however, of course, in the past couple of years, it's not easy for people outside of Japan to travel to Japan. So people may feel that uh, Japan become a more um, like a single singular or a monolithic uh, place because the foreigners were just not around. Uh, but uh, I think this is just a matter of time until we all open up uh, our borders. Uh, during the pandemic, I think a lot of people learned about Japan through video conference like now, which is again, a important part of increasing the diversity. At least we're speaking English now, right? So that's also linguistic diversity. So uh, digital realms can let people connect weekly uh, or monthly or um, every quarter uh, to different cultures in a regular thing. And once uh, the pandemic is over and people can travel again, those new friends that you made over the internet in the past couple of years, uh, we can invite them over. So I really look forward uh, to visit Japan uh, in person. And if more people who like Japan, like me, uh, all visit Japan as tourists uh, for business uh, or for extended stay, uh, like the um, there, there are people who uh, work on particular pro-social or investment or things like that issues as in exchange uh, student fashion. Uh, so like one school versus another and so on. So not just to restore such exchanges to be the same level before the pandemic, uh, we also must include uh, new sources of such exchanges uh, that we only encountered during the pandemic. Uh, and I think that will make Japan or really any place a more diverse place because it's new friendship, uh, but now they're gathering physically uh, in the same place again. Thank you. So we have to like include some opportunity to like welcome the the mm -hmm. people from abroad. Yes, and they they already like yeah. Japan, right? Many of them already speak Japanese. Yes. <laughs> so so just invite them over uh, again. Yeah. And what are, what about Taiwan? So mm -hmm. why what? How do you have you do anything mm -hmm. to like become to make Taiwan for more diversified? Yes. Uh, so even during the pandemic, we issued thousands of gold cards to people who are overseas. They have never been to Taiwan, but they like Taiwan and want to contribute to Taiwan. So we give them uh, three years of residency uh, just because they like Taiwan. Uh, and thousands of those gold cards were issued, uh, and it includes healthcare, healthcare for their family, and so on. Uh, and they don't need to work for any particular employer. They just need to identify culturally uh, or identify spiritually uh, with Taiwan. Uh, so thousands of uh, people, uh, many of my friends in Silicon Valley, uh, joined us in Taiwan physically, even during the pandemic. And now after the pandemic, we're now looking to expand that program even more. Thank you. And <clears throat> next question is about yourself. Mm. So uh, you are making many successes and 
you are making very great applications in Taiwan. And what failures have you had in the past and how did you overcome it? Yeah, so uh, I told the story how I learned many good ideas uh, from GovZero, right? Uh, but uh, not all good ideas uh, work on the first try. Uh, many of you in Japan have heard about the mask uh, map, but not many people uh, from Japan, if you just watch mainstream media, know that it really failed very, uh, very badly the very first day uh, that we rolled out the, the mask rationing map. And the reason why is that the map was supposed to show the pharmacies that run out of uh, masks by making sure that if you give them the health card, they use the health card to deduct their inventory. Uh, and if you uh, don't collect your masks immediately, then of course you will not pay. So we thought it's a good idea, but uh, obviously it's not the case. Many pharmacies on the first day, they collect everyone's health card and say, okay, go to work. And then they don't insert the health card to the machine. The pharmacy just put those cards there. And then the IC card uh, wait until the noon during the lunch break uh, so that the pharmacy can still sell their usual uh, prescriptions. And during the lunch break, they start to insert the IC card into the machine, into the computer uh, and uh, make the inventory count. And then they tell the people who gave them the IC card to go back uh, on evening to collect their health card and the mask. And we did totally didn't think about that. So for the mask map, because the computer never received the IC card, uh, it shows that pharmacy never sold any mask. And then during lunch break, it sold everything, like suddenly sold everything. So it's not useful. Uh, and people uh, was very angry because they see, oh, all these pharmacies have masks. But by the time they went to the pharmacy, they, they saw, oh, it's already running out. The map is not showing true um, accurate numbers. So it was a, a failure, a very a big failure. And I didn't know how to uh, fix that. So I feel um, like very lost. So I went to a nearby pharmacy uh, and uh, the pharmacist uh, told me that the pharmacist is also thinking about this problem. Uh, and the next day when I visit them again, they figure out a solution. Uh, the solution is this, um, on the morning when they receive uh, 200 masks, they will enter 200 into the system uh, and they, uh, you know, get an inventory. Uh, so they figure out they can also type in minus 200. So uh, at any given time, once they um, run out of the daily queue, once they collected a uh, sufficient amount of IC cards, they just tell our computer they have received a negative uh, 5,000 uh, masks, their inventory goes into negative. Uh, so they disappear from the mask. So in a sense, they hacked the system. They found a cybersecurity loophole, uh, but that made them uh, possible to disappear from the mask. Uh, I say, oh, it's a really good idea. So I go back to the National Health uh, Administration and I tell them to add to the computer interface a button if you press the button, you disappear from the map. You do not have to fake uh, minus uh, 5,000 uh, inventory, right? So once we roll it out, the mask map become accurate uh, again. So uh, I think the people closest to the pain, the people closest to the field, they know how to innovate. They know how to fix things. And our job is to take all the sides, is to go to uh, the pain points and listen to the real people dealing with those real pain points. And chances are they will have really good idea. So what I want to say is that failure is not um, terrible, right? If you want to listen to other people, failure is a good reason for other people to teach you something you didn't know. Uh, so um, as I often quote Lena Cohen, uh, there's a crack in everything and that's how the light uh, gets in. So failures like that are the cracks uh, that allows the light uh, to get in. I see, thank you. It's the last question from us. What is your dream and what are you interested in these days? Yeah, uh, so 
maybe uh, because I, I met uh, with uh, Takoro Asao-san uh, today, uh, now all I can think about is visiting Japan <laughs> because he was uh, telling me uh, that uh, because he was part of the Tokyo Olympic uh, planning team, uh, he and his team members was there at the day of opening ceremony uh, with that floating uh, earth and drones and things like that. And watching that, uh, he told me that he uh, Told her his colleagues, they were saying, uh, Audrey Tang uh, sh uh, could have been here, right? It's so close, <laughs> uh, and so on. So uh, they they really uh, miss me, I guess, uh, at the uh, opening. So hearing that uh, from him, I also think that I really should uh, visit again Japan, um, Tokyo, but not necessarily just Tokyo, other cities as well. So my dream uh, for the next uh, few months, next year or so, is to visit uh, Japan again. Uh, I hope that answered the question. Please come to our school. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm interested, as I mentioned, I'm interested to talking to people younger than 20 years old. So that, that really is what interests me these days. So we're doing this uh, via video conference, but I will also, of course, uh, very much uh, wish if I can visit you in person. Yeah. Thank you so much. So we move on to the Q&A session two. Mm -hmm. This time, anyone can ask of Lee. So please raise your hand if you want to ask a question to me of Lee. And if you can speak English well, it's okay. We will help you. It's a very precious opportunity and you shouldn't miss this chance. I think there's someone raising their hand. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> カメラオンにしていただけますか？あのカメラがオンにできなくて、じゃあそのままで大丈夫です。Okay, uh, I'm so glad to hear your um, lectures, and I really felt the that Taiwan's government is really, um, really good for uh, younger peoples to. Um, show their opinions and thought, but um, I think for Japanese government uh, now it's a bit difficult. It's mm -hmm. really difficult to show um, younger people's uh, thought or ideas or opinions mm -hmm. because the government is now for older people's or for um, people who works in their society so like you said that in taiwan there is some uh, rules mm -hmm. like the one third one third uh, yes yes one yeah. third uh, any gender must be mm -hmm. above one third in any mm -hmm. uh, committee yes uh -huh. yes and also the petition yes if five, five thousand petition yes uh -huh. yes i thought that it is really um amazing rules mm -hmm. to show uh, all people's opinions and thought mm -hmm. but for japanese government i think uh, we can't do same thing right now mm -hmm. so um how we can change the government or the mm -hmm. society that mm -hmm. we have now yeah uh, it's a great question uh, usually it's easier if it's just one uh, school or one university, one district, one town, one municipality, usually in a, a smaller region, uh, like just a district, uh, the head of the district is very approachable. You can just knock on their door or something. Uh, so um, like in Estonia, because in Estonia, uh, 
it, there's just a, a couple million people, right? So it's like everybody is a relative to everyone, right? So uh, they're very direct, very participative uh, because it's smaller. So uh, my encouragement to you uh, will be not directly going for the national level in Japan, but finding in your um, region, in your metropolis or in your district, uh, or even just your apartment complex, uh, someone who are willing to try out uh, such ideas of uh, petitions, of gender balanced committees, uh, of participatory budgeting, and you will find actually some people, some associations or co-ops are already doing that, and then join them uh, and effect real change, even just for a, a couple hundred people or a couple thousand mm -hmm. people, and then gradually grow from there. Because in Taiwan, mm -hmm. uh, it also took us 30 years uh, from the community building movement to now. So you can, must start somewhere, somewhere small, yeah. Thank, thanks. Mm -hmm. So, next, eight, 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 yeah, um, I have I have a question about the system that you've um, uh, sorry you've created. I mean, it's golden card. Um, mm -hmm. I heard that um, you implemented this system shortly after you came up with these ideas, right? Mm -hmm. yes. In order to um, tackle with yes. a, a COVID problem. The COVID, and, yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, actually, I think that was possible just in Taiwan because Taiwan has this kind of. A narrower, narrower society or narrower community or uh, neat system of of society um, compared with other countries uh, like um, Japan or the states because uh, we have uh, more population compared with Taiwan, right? So um, I would like to ask you: Is it really, really, is it really possible to adapt um, this system to um, any other countries uh, in the world? Yeah, but the to Tokyo metropolitan area adopted the COVID-19 dashboard uh, from COVID Japan in, I believe, just also three days or something. So obviously it could happen in Japan uh, because uh, I participated in the translation, right? I changed one word uh, and uh, I think on Twitter uh, there was this uh, exchange, right, between uh, me and the governor. So uh, I, I think uh, this really happened in Japan. Now, it, while it is true, of course, that the population of the entire Japan is larger, uh, the population in Tokyo is more similar uh, to that in Taiwan. So I, I think it's always possible to find a more closely knit people, narrower, as you said, that had some prior experiences introducing this kind of thing. Now in Japan, uh, I think the digital agency is now pushing this kind of co-creation, not just in Tokyo, but also in other areas. And there's a code for city, code for city in pretty much all the major uh, Japanese cities. Uh, so look for those uh, people. And I think they are working generally toward the same direction as us. Thank you. Thank you. では次、ゴディ10番の人先ほどと同じようにえっとできればカメラをオンにして名前を名乗ってお願いします。ゴディ10番さんいらっしゃいますか。はい。Yes。はい。え、thank you for for you mm -hmm. and it is cold and there, there are some stereotypes mm -hmm. that's avoiding troubles and conflicts in Japan mm -hmm. and uh, I think it has a bad effect to gender equality mm -hmm. and so on and it is because um, some people try not to see um, minority mm. And uh, I don't think it is good. And uh, I uh, please ask, uh, please tell me some ideas. Uh, how can we uh, overcome this situation? Okay. 
uh, you sorry, I, I missed the first part. You say uh, there's less traveling because of COVID. Is that what you said, or I, I heard what you said uh, last, right? You said uh, that it creates a bad effect for the diversity for the minorities. Uh, but what was the situation that caused that? I, I didn't get that. Can can you say that again? I see. Um, and please ask me some ideas. Mm -hmm. to overcome this, this situation of oh. Japan. Okay, yeah, but, but the situation was uh, like the minorities uh, didn't get sufficient time uh, to uh, voice their concerns or to talk with others. Is that the situation you're describing? And I think and the stereotype of mm -hmm. avoid troubles and have a bad effect. The stereotype of avoiding travels? Travels and uh, conflicts. Ah, so, ah, ah, I see, I see. Right, so what you're saying is that people do not want to be troublemakers. Is that what you're Yes, yes, yes. Ah, okay, okay. Right, so, um, yeah, because I was like, uh, if you innovate uh, and make good solution to solve troubles, that sounds really good to me. <laughs> but that's not what you mean. Uh, you mean that people do not want to um, waste time by causing trouble for others, right? That That's the, the culture. Yeah, in Taiwan, we have that culture too. Um, I think that the point I'm making is that it's not about causing trouble for others. It's not about making trouble. It is rather about finding better ways to realize a common value, right? So um, I, I mentioned in the Q&A, uh, if the older generation don't like marriage equality uh, for the minorities, right? Lesbians and gays and bisexuals, uh, then uh, what we are saying is not, we're here to cause you trouble uh, to redefine marriage now. But what we're saying is essentially, you like family, we like family too. Uh, you like more children, uh, we like more children too. Uh, you like a stable uh, social relationship, we like that too. Uh, and then uh, for some of us, uh, the way to get to those family values uh, must go through a civil union and later on marriage equality because otherwise we cannot form a stable relationship and uh, raise children, right? So uh, by making the argument, not countering, not attacking, the other side, the existent majority, by saying, oh, your majority value is great. Let me join your value with uh, my way. Uh, then it's not causing trouble for the majority. It is actually joining the majority. And this is what I mean by taking all the sides. I hope that answered your question. Thank you. What do you value the most when you work in public? When I work in public, what do I value the most? Is that yes? A... Ah, yes. okay. Good question. Um, I think the thing I value the most is how can I open more possibility for the next generation and the generation afterward, for seven generations afterward. If I solve a problem today by causing the problem for the next generation, then I'm basically taking away possible futures. But if I solve the problem just a little bit, uh, but uh, leave the world a more open place so the younger people have more room to innovate, more possibilities, more democratic, more resilient, more plural, then uh, I don't have to solve everything because the younger generation will be more capable than I am with better tools, uh, with better understanding, uh, with better technology uh, than, than me. So instead of fixing everything in this generation, what's important is that we don't pollute the next generation's environment. We don't close off 
next generation's possibilities. Uh, and then the next generation will figure things out. In, and if they don't, uh, well, their next generation will. So sustainability and intergenerational solidarity, uh, like um, uh, liking uh, the possibility of future more than the current generation. That's what I value most. Thank you. はい、次の質問と要因の三十二番の方お願いします。名前を名乗ってとカメラできればオンにしてお願いします。Thank you very much for your time today. I'm Nene Nakazawa. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, what I would like to ask you how. Uh, is how to motivate yourself when you are reluctant to do something what you have to do uh, i go to sleep <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then i wake up with motivation uh, it always works so if uh, i'm frustrated or if i don't have motivation uh, it's usually because i'm tired and if i force myself to work i would not sleep well that day if I don't sleep well, I will not remember the lessons I need to learn today. So instead of fighting, uh, struggling, uh, I just immediately go to sleep. Uh, and sometime if it's early in the day, uh, like in the afternoons, uh, it's just a nap. I wake up after half an hour, after an hour with good ideas. Uh, but if it's later in the day, like 9 p.m., 10 p.m., uh, I go to sleep and then I wake up early, right? Like five or six uh, with very good ideas. So no matter what time is it in the day, uh, if I feel frustrated, I just go to sleep. Okay, thank you. So thank you your uh, thank you for your lecture. Uh, I'm Salam Nakamura. Uh, so I have a question. Uh, what should we do while we are students? Mm -hmm. Well, if you're a student, figure out how to learn. Uh, it's not just about uh, receiving an education but rather about uh, finding something that you're really curious about. And once you're cu really curious about something, you can then learn not just from the textbook or from your teacher, but from everyone who are interested and curious about this. That's the community we keep talking about. And once you're in the community, you can learn to co-create toward a common good so that uh, as a byproduct of your learning, you also make it easier for everybody else after you to learn the same thing because they can follow your footsteps, right? So I think this uh, autonomy, interaction, and the common good is really the same thing, but it starts uh, with curiosity, with figuring out what is this that you want to learn. Many people, uh, if they know, whatever they learn will make a real change in the world. Like if they learn how to use e-petition, they can change the uh, sleeping schedule for all middle schoolers by starting a petition. That's a very strong motivation. So it doesn't need to be a personal curiosity. It could also be a social one. Like I'm curious if I can change the sleeping uh, patterns of everyone by making sure the schools do not mandate us to show up at seven. Uh, that's also a kind of curiosity. Thank you. Thank you. Unfortunately, we have we don't have so much time, so it's the last question. Good afternoon. Thank you for your precious time. So I want to question. I, I have a question for you. Yes. So what do you think about our our future working style. So because of coronavirus in Japan, so working online became so common more than past. So, but nowadays, some people say there more better business or better work should be done and there's a face-to-face -face communication. So I want to hear your opinion or vision 
of our future working style. Yes. So um, when I become a minister in 2016, I say I only go to the cabinet meeting on Monday and Thursday. And the other days, I'm all over the world uh, and traveling through time zones, right? Waking up uh, in uh, America uh, and then during the day to Japan uh, and gradually in the evening to Africa and Europe <laughs> because that's how the time zone goes, right? So uh, if I am trapped into the physical place, then only my coworkers can see my face. But if I take a few days uh, focusing on the remote, then the entire world uh, are face to face to me uh, through video conference. On the other hand, if I spend every day of my week just doing teleconference, then my colleagues, the other ministers would not even know me. And, and it will be impossible for me to be a bridge between the online community to the cabinet. So at least two days a week or three days a week, depending on your uh, familiarity, I think is important. So this is sometimes called a hybrid work style. Uh, where you meet with your close colleagues to figure out what to do. But actually doing that, you spend time on teleworking, on smaller groups, on co-working spaces and things like that. Uh, I think there are many research uh, that shows this is better than everybody just at online or everybody trapped in face-to-face. -face. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Audrey. And uh, I would like uh, Mr. Hiromi Katakura to bring a very short thank you message. So, uh, Mr. Katakura, can you turn on your mic and camera and bring, bring a short thank you message to Audrey, please? Please. Yeah. Can you hear my voice? Yes. So thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to speak today. I'm Hiromi Katakura, a fourth grade of Koishikawa Secondary School, and I'll present an ending speech. Audrey, you talked about programming in your presentation. I felt close to you because I also do some programming with Scratch. And also, I think your ideas about the nature of gender may have helped ease the minds of those who are wondering. I think Audrey's idea were fresh to us and gave us many options. We also learned the importance of viewing failure in a positive direction. There are a lot of things we should learn from the good status quo in Taiwan. If there is another opportunity like this, I would like to listen to your lecture again. Thank you very, very much for your time today. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and thank you all for very, very good questions. It's obvious that you thought a lot uh, before asking those questions and I really value today's exchange. Thank you. Live long and prosper. Thank you. So finally, we want to take a picture with you. So only how to say mm -hmm. goodbye in Taiwan. Uh, or, or just bye bye, or, or bye bye, bye bye is uh, actually what we do <laughs> too. <laughs> yeah, just bye bye. みなさん、えっと、できるだけ、えっと、カメラをオンにして、全員で、えっと、今教わった挨拶。あるいは、えっと、みなさんのする挨拶を。なんであれ。すごい。はい。あ、違う。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。